Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Moni Love. Moni. Good Yay. morning. Moni Love. What's up? <laughs> good morning. It's good to see you in New York. Yes. It's, I'm so excited to be in New York. I haven't been here in so long. Really? Yeah, like my kids come back more often than I do because, you know, I'm I'm old as dirt. I got grown kids. Don't say Don't that. Don't say that. That's not true. Don't say <laughs> that. I'm still a baby. But you know, you know, you know, I've got my do- my older daughters are in their 20s, so they mm-hmm. come back frequently. Mm-hmm. You know, they come back for this, that, Rolling Loud. They was just here for Rolling Loud, you mm-hmm. know. So they come back and they're like, Mom, it's changed so much and this <laughs> and that and so I don't get an opportunity to come that often. So I was really excited to come up. I had to force Moni Love to go out when I, oh was, I was in Atlanta. I was like, girl, come out. She never goes anywhere. And then I didn't believe she was really coming. Because you know how some people, you like, is she going to really show up? Listen, no, because you take because the night before she was like, "Oh, come out!" Da, 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 da. I was at Bar Vegan. Yeah, and I looked at it and I was like, "It's not gonna happen tonight, sis. <laughs> it's just not getting the cards tonight." And so then the next day when she texted me, she's like, "Are you coming?" And then she's checking every five minutes, like, "Are you gonna be there?" She got there before me, so yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you stayed the whole time, and then some. I did, but I discovered after you left and after I went home. I cannot do this brunch thing. I have to leave it to the kids. Yeah, we went to really toast, on, Len- we went to toast the- on Lennox. <laughs> I can't do the brunch thing because <laughs> it, abs- it just engulfs your whole day. Mm-hmm. Like your whole day's gone. By the time I got home, it was like 5.30. I'm like, I met her at 12.30. Like, I don't know what how? happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't know who Moni Love is, of course, you just got to break it down for some of the kitties that might not know who Moni oh, Love absolutely. is. Oh, absolutely. Now, Moni Love is from uh, London, yes. England. Yes, That's yes. where you can tell the accent. Of People course. try to say her accent is fake. All the time. <laughs> oh, this fake accent, especially on this TV show now. Oh, this fake accent. And I'm just like, you really need to get off your stoop more mm-hmm. and get out into no, the world. Know that. But she's, a, of course, a, a two-time Grammy Award nominee. Uh, number one records, you know, Moni in the middle. Where she at? I think it's she, a shame. And it, of course, it's a shame. <laughs> Buddy, Ring my bell. She's had a ton of, ton of records out. And Ladies then she's first. also a radio personality and TV host. Yes. So and now, she's on Marriage Boot Camp right that's now. That's what I was going to get to. The hip-hop edition. <laughs> now you're on Marriage Boot Camp. Yeah. What got you to Marriage Boot Camp? Problems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, honestly, I've never undergone any type of therapy. And... Um, this ongoing dance that I've been doing with my youngest child's father, it was like, uh, they they contacted me and I thought about it and I was like, I've never done anything like this before. Do I really want to do this? And um, seeing my brother in rhyme, Styles, mm-hmm. on the show uh, in a previous season, I was like, okay, well, if Styles can do it, mm-hmm. then I can do it. Styles and Ajua. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. Styles and Ajua were on there and, and they're two of the realest people that I know. Mm-hmm. So that allowed me to even consider, you know. So then I spoke to uh, Tuff, who's on it with me. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on the show together and uh, long conversation. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? Do you realize how vulnerable we're going to have to be? Do you realize how everybody's going to be in our business? You know, that whole back and forth conversation. Mm-hmm. And we agreed that we would go in and, and, and get the therapy because uh, the sacrifice that we make for making ourselves transparent might actually uh, help us in the long run as far as getting the therapy and understanding where we are as individuals, uh, as a couple or not. Are you know, all together? With, with, whichever way it works. Uh, you're not going to trick me into... It's okay. giving away, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm Nora I'm, and I'm, Nuri. I'm, you got to remember when you're talking to me that I'm just like you. Yeah, I'm just on knows. the other side of the I console know, I, sometimes today. Sometimes you can trick somebody every so. once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Nori and Nuri are on there with you guys, yes, too, which I yes. thought was pretty nice. And yeah. there was a fake couple on there, too. Molly. A oh, my couple. gosh. The yes, there was. And I didn't... That was a mind blower. But you know what, though? If you peeped it, because what did you do? You binged? Yeah, I binged it. Okay. If you peeped it, though, and you peeped me, I was cynical and picking at it the whole time. (laughs) Because something just didn't sit right. And I would just be like... Yeah, they were on there, and then she finally had to admit, like, look, we're not really a couple. He, uh, Molly wanted to come on here and pretend to be a couple so we could get some attention for his career and my career. Wow. It was really bad. Wow, but you know, <laughs> then he wanted to stay. You know something though. I then got... after the show, he got arrested. Goodness gracious! For yeah. what it, was it for trafficking or something? Or... Honestly, I I didn't know who this guy was when he came in the and and that's not you know that's no shade 
as mm-hmm. as the youngsters say. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that wasn't that. It's just that I I wasn't familiar with who he was. The same way how I'm sure a, some of the other cast members weren't sure or familiar with who I am. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because time moves on and things change and new people come into the business. So I didn't know who he was, uh, the uh, Molly, mm-hmm. initially, and um, something just felt weird about that couple from the beginning. So when it, you know, I got to like Treasure though. Mm-hmm. I did, I, I gotta admit, I did get to really, come to really like her. I wanna get back to you and Tuff. So when y'all decided to do this show, <laughs> were y'all nervous at all about being so transparent? First of all, are y'all transparent to each other? Because you know, in certain relationships, sometimes the man or the wife only tells a little bit of the story, but on the mm-hmm. show, you have somebody where you have to tell the full story, mm-hmm. full feelings, full transparency. Mm-hmm. You have kids as well. Yes. Did that make you nervous at all? Uh, no, my my general characteristic is pretty transparent. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that the reason why I'm like that as a person is because I like to leave no stone unturned. Mm-hmm. If in the event that later on we have to go back and check the tape. Mm. So I like to be as transparent as possible from the gate. Him? Not so much. He had, a, he, had a break, he had a breakthrough moment. He had a huge breakthrough moment. Mm. And it, it it was a boulder that has been in our relationship forever that I just couldn't get past. And that's part of my frustration with him. So uh, when we had that breakthrough moment, I was like, the angels came out. And, mm-hmm. and You're like, I'm going home. I was, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I was like, I'm done here because mm-hmm. this is really uh, the boulder that has been in the in the middle of our relationship all these years. I want to talk about that, okay? Because he has consistently cheated on you throughout your relationship, and he had an explanation for that. So what was his explanation? Um, Basically, his explanation was he felt like it wasn't a deal breaker. He felt like cheating wasn't the be-all, end-all, uh, uh, or the end-all of a relationship because he uh, expressed he had grown up in a situation in his in his childhood mm-hmm. where he saw male members of his family having more than one household. Mm-hmm. So and he felt like as long as everybody's taken care of and as long as everybody is happy and everybody has what they need, uh, it shouldn't matter whether uh, the man steps out and has another set up someplace, another relationship, possibly another set of kids or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. it shouldn't really make a difference and so I was like I'm like wow it's been like 13 years and I didn't know this how did I not know this like you sit there for me I sit there and I'm like how did I not know this like I've never had this conversation with you. Did that make you. you somewhat empathetic toward him? I'm just curious. It did make me empathetic towards him, but it doesn't excuse... It's not like, oh, okay, that's cool then. Yeah, all right, we straight <laughs> now. Like, no. Mm. Um, it it did, just provided some understanding. Like, why you keep doing this and thinking that it's okay? I'm a super analytical person, Angela. I am like, I need to know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that so many years have gone by and I knew that there was something there that kept getting in the way of us even being friendly. Mm. You know, it's every, it's a lot of mean-spiritedness between us, you know? And I wanted to know what it was, what was the root of that was. And what it was was I could never understand why not only did you step out on our relationship so many times, mm-hmm. but in addition to that, you seem to have no remorse about it. Mm. Right. Like, what is that when it's at home? Did you it's, forgive him? Yes. How many times did you forgive him, and what made you? Forgive oh my him? God! You mean throughout our entire <laughs> yeah, not, not, journey, not just not this boot camp? Boot camp but just, this. Oh my God! In life, oh, um, if I'm honest, yeah, um, I stopped counting. So many, so what, what, many. What made you forgive him? What made you say, you know what? This is gonna be the last time he's not gonna do it again. Ah, this t- is gonna be the last time. Wait, he's not no, do this it again. is the, this is the ringer. Mm. Um. Because he, the, the first thing that he admitted uh, on boot camp was that he cheated on me when I, when, when I was pregnant, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Which, um, this is going to be an exclusive on this show. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Sh- I didn't know that. Oh, mm-hmm. Almost right. slipped there. Uh, I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So when we got to the show and then he was like, oh, I cheated on her. And I was like, damn. For real? Like, I mean, I got all this other cheating, but when I was, pre- for, I mean, I suspected. Did you feel like but- you wanted to know that? I want to know everything. Okay. I want to know everything. I want to know it all. I want to know everything. I want to know what color drawers she was wearing. I want to know everything. Sheesh. Like, I don't want to know I hope those she details. wasn't wearing drawers. I hope she at least had a thong on it. Booty <laughs> but, but go ahead. What, was what? he using protection but, at least? Um, yeah, I mean, I never 
came up with anything, know you know. <laughs> I mean, I would know if he wasn't, I would have found out the hard way, right. you know. So, um, but initially, like, finding that out on the show, I was like, wow. And and then I first found out that he cheated. All these people started coming out the woodwork after I had our child. Mm. And uh, she was a baby. And um, via Twitter somebody else claimed that they were in the same situation that I was previously in, I, you know, that she was pregnant. Being pregnant, uh-huh. And that is what brought the whole dollhouse down because after that one came out, another one came out, then another one came out, then another one came out. You know, it was almost, you could have made a documentary about it, like some documentaries we've seen mm-hmm. in the past. So yeah, he has numerous children outside of your relationship no oh, oh, oh okay that's devastating especially with a newborn yeah yeah so that so that, that was how i found out that the that was really the onslaught of the cheating that was when it just kept coming like another one another one another one and your older children don't care for him because of that my oldest daughter is just now coming to a place actually where where she's like uh she's more embracive towards him as a person mm-hmm. and as her sister's dad you know but when he was living with us and stuff like that, she was like, mm-mm. Now, so, he also had some issues. So, 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 so well, how did you forgive him? Like, why? You never answered that. I gave him an ultimatum. And um, the bottom line, I do love him. Mm-hmm. And there's no so, judgment here. Like, so, you don't judge, no, you just, no. I, and, and I'm comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know you guys. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm not worried about the judgment or anything. I love him. So, you know, let's put that on the table. Uh, always have. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he obviously the waterworks and I don't want our family to break up mm-hmm. and and the crying and the please let's not do this I'm sorry I'll mm-hmm. try again I'll do better blah 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 um but me deciding that I was going to forgive him I said to him okay I said I will remain your woman on one condition and he said what's that and I said that you uh that you will not any longer get professional help from me. I will be your woman. I will be the mother of your child. I will not be beating the pavement for you as far as <clears throat> driving up and down the turnpike to New York to sit with Steve Rifkin, to sit with Kevin Lyles, to sit with Lior, to sit with this one, that one. Because he's an artist and he wanted you to help him in his and career. And these are the people that I've had him. I mean, God bless um, Chris Lighty. I had him sit with him too. Like, the dude's dope. He's, 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 he's a special kind of lyricist. But that's tough, man, when you're with somebody. Oh, oh no pun intended. To, yeah, tough, his name is tough. <laughs> but when you're with somebody <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're an artist and, and you can potentially help their career, mm-hmm. but and you did, you did make some efforts, but then he had some issues because he felt like you stopped helping him. But do you owe that to the person you're with to get them their career? Because I feel like you did give him a lot of alley-oops. It's just for whatever reason, he's got to take it from there. Well, back then, because when th- this is when um, I was driving up and up and down the turnpike for him when I was pregnant, and when I fresh had our child, I was doing a lot of work that um, a, a manager, a and R person, would be doing for their artist, and I was doing that for him. And then in the midst of all of that, I all of this cheating stuff came out. So then mm-hmm. I, I looked at it like that's why when you see in marriage boot camp and on the wall, there's this thing that says you're the you're the um, I'm Dr. Frankenstein and you're the monster that I'm creating is because I looked at that situation when I was in it and I, this is like 10 years ago or whatever and I looked at it and I was more than 10 years ago, 12 years ago and I was like, I'm helping you. You haven't even arrived yet and you're doing this mess already? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that this mess is good anyway, but damn, at least get somewhere. Right. First, I mean, again, I'm not, con- I'm not, I'm not condoning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, when you've become an artist and you're known, then yes, go and be frolicking all over the place. No, I'm not saying that either. But how much worse is it going to be when he does? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's where I was at back then. You know what I'm saying? This is like um, 2009. Yeah, this is like 2009. So I was like, man. Nah. So when he was like, you know, I don't want to I don't want our family to break up, whatever. And I was like, OK, well, I said, I will try and work with you and work on our relationship and remain together. But I'm not doing that no more. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like if you you go ahead and, and pursue being an artist and, and take whatever route with other people that you meet, because, he you knows some other folks, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, do that. 
I'm not doing that. I'll be here. I'll I'll be making dinner. I'll be taking care of uh, my my previous children and our child. And um, I'll be continuing to be on radio and do my hustle. When do you feel? When did you feel he changed? If he did change, like, cause you know, somebody could say, "I'm not gonna cheat no more. I'm not gonna cheat no more." But it has to be a time or a moment where, where it really hits him and be like, "I want to be different." Did he get to that point where he wants to be different? Where he wants to be better? Where he wants to be a better boyfriend, husband? The conversation. The the, the, conv- the convers person. the conversation between us would uh would would give way to that. Uh, over the last, I would say, two years, because we've been estranged. He's mm-hmm. been living in he's been living in Philly, mm-hmm. and I've been living in uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And so I travel to Philly. I see him. He travels to Atlanta. He sees me. Spends time with um, with us. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it's been. I would say since like 2000, actually more than two years since like 2017. And that's another reason why when the TV show came to us and was like, uh, "Would you be interested?" Part of our conversation was, might you come back to Philly or might I come out to Atlanta? And I w- I'm still kind of like, are we there yet? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Are we actually there yet? But when, um, y'all, when y'all do argue, do y'all, do y'all still talk about the past a lot? Is that something? We haven't argued, to be quite honest oh, with you. The, the, the arguments that have um, ensued lately are the ones that you see on the show. Mm. We haven't really... We're having to have those tough conversations. Exactly. Correct. Now, mm-hmm. here's a tough conversation. Because while you say you've forgiven him and maybe willing for another chance, there's certain things that you won't do. Like you won't perform oral sex. And that's going to take a minute. That's going to take a minute. Be- <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing, Envy? But that is tough because like, it is no, true. No, I mean, it was- this, it's the breakfast club and, and we family. It's real talk right now. So. When somebody cheats on you, you do think about that. Like somebody else's mouth has been there. Yeah, it's I don't like know it's, where this is community been. dick. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sorry. That's that's right. But but then when do you so say. So you have never done oral to him? Of course. No, oh, she's oh, saying now, now she can't. Okay, now right. that it's been. Uh, she made it seem like, you know, like, you know how Jamaican men say they don't eat poom poom? No, 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 like, no. Oh, like, no, 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 no. I was, no, no, I was like, saying no. because she doesn't know, because other people have been doing that because he cheated. Okay. Right. And I so sometimes you picture that, right? Like when you're about to do yeah. that. Yeah. So what can he do to, it's just going to take time? What do you it's think just it gonna, is? It's He's just, like, what can he do to get some oral back and get some little head? It's just going to take, it's just going to, it would just take time. Something like that would, you know, it's just going to take time. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say. You know, it's like I'm not like running back. And then, and then in addition to that, like who in the room is stupid right now? We live in two different states. You What, what are you, a, a monk f- right. since 2017? Like I'm not dumb. But can you do other things like you can still have sex with him, but you just can't do that part or you don't want to get physical at all? Because sometimes being physical with someone is hard when that's happened and you can't block it out. For me, it's mainly it's, it's the oral thing. So it's just that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah, else. That's, <laughs> that's just, that's the mind blocker. Right. right. You know? He, under, he has to understand that though, a little bit. Yeah, he does. He yeah. doesn't, you know, he was on the show. He just was being honest because we're forced into this situation right. where you just have to say what, you know, say what it is. But he, he gets it. He gets why. And he understands that that's a time thing. Is he apologetic now? Is he remorseful? Is he trying to do better? Yeah. You know, you could just say I apologize. I let's get over this. Let's get over this shit. But it could be like working to right his wrongs. Yes, um, but there's still there's still uh, questions when it comes to are we? Am I going to move to Atlanta? Uh, are you going to move? I mean, I'm definitely not moving back to Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, love Philly. Um, there's so much about it that I miss, but where I am in my career and and my business and things of that nature, it it doesn't bring me back um, to Philly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, I I can't see myself moving back there. So you know we'll 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 have to finish going through this process. I mean, we obviously have finished going through the process. We just haven't seen it all yet. Exactly. But if he's a musician, if he's a musician, I think Atlanta is the hot spot right now. So it makes more sense for him to move to Atlanta than you to move to Philly. I would say. And in addition. I would agree, and, and, but I, and in addition to that, I'll also say that you know nobody's an idiot. Everybody sees what's going on on social network platform. I do have a single out. It's called Divine. It has Sky Zoo on it, and, and it has, Tough is on it too, and it has Tough on it. So I'm sure that people are sitting there like, oh, okay, so one on one makes two. She didn't help him with his career before, but now now she's clearly helping him with his career. We already know what happened. We can skip to they the got end. back together cool. and da 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 da. You can say that if you want to. But in this business, as you two very well know, we work with a lot of people that we cannot stand. 
But you guys have a child together. You're not so, gonna tell. Yeah. So, yeah, so y'all got a child together. So. No, we do. So it's so not. It's not that all the time you never did that, and now you did. So. It's not because I healed. Okay. Got you. I healed. I was able to do that for him, whether or not, you know, we remain together. Mm-hmm. I was able to do that for him because I healed. Now, now we're talking to Moni Love, of course, uh, musician, artist, uh, radio personality, host. Now, Miss Jones, mm-hmm. uh, who started me in Morning Radio, she was on Drink Champ. Shout out to Nori. And um, I guess she made a statement that made it seem like you, her, and Tupac had a little thing going on. Had a little, a little treasy treesome. <laughs> Is there any any truth to that? Um, ugh, how do I? No. <laughs> no. So wh- where did that come from? Did you, it was nothing. Not a kiss. Not it's, a peck. Not a hug. Not a nothing. No insertion. When I was Heavy. when I was I'm around here, the, the timelines off. When I was around Pac heavily, mm-hmm. I didn't even know Jonesy yet. Mm-hmm. I hadn't met her yet. Um, so. Yeah, my I I remember I remember everything about that night though. I don't remember whose party it was. I don't remember if it was TLC. I know it was at Roselands, but I don't remember whose party it was. If it was TLC's album, um, platinum album, platinum party for their first album, or if it was uh the Def Jam Christmas party. I don't I think remember. She said Def Jam Christmas party. But go ahead. It was the Def Jam That's Christmas said, party. I believe, okay, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember which one it was because a lot of really cool events, big events happened at Roselands back then. Um, but. I do remember she and I went together. As a matter of fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she, I, and Angie Martinez rolled up together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I remember Pac being in there, and I remember him walking across the floor to say hi. And we leaned in, and he hugged me, and I think he he hugged Miss Jones too. Mm-hmm. And he leaned over and he hugged me, and he did say something in my ear. Um, wasn't on the same side of my body as Jonesy was on was on this side <clears throat> and uh what he said to me uh was uh I don't care how many times you get married uh you going to always be my n word verbatim you ever dated Pac? Um it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> what's it what's it complicated? You could call it that. Um he wanted to call it that. Mm-hmm. I did not. Mm. Um but we did sleep in the same bed together every night mm. on tour. Okay. And uh, that is because myself and Queen Latifah's, one of Queen Latifah's dancers, 007, Allison, she's my best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, she and I shared a room. Um, and Pac was uh, with Shock G. Mm-hmm. Shared, well, not really sharing a room. He was just kind of like camping out in Shock. Because we were, he was... Everybody like, was on, it was, was on tour the club life. at the time. Shot it was G tour was life. Humpty Hump. Everybody was, was uh, shacking up so in the right. So when he had company, Pac would be kicked out. Correct. So Pac, me, and 007, Allison, we became like the three stooges. We were always together. If you saw one of us, where's the other two? Mm-hmm. If you saw two of us, where's the other one? He and I became like that also, mm-hmm. where people would be like, where's Mo? What you doing in the hallway? Right. That type vibe. And so, yeah, he, he, he and I got really, really close. Um, and it was like, okay, we, well, we're doing everything else except that. Why don't we do that? This is him talking. Mm-hmm. We're doing everything else. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're playing we house. We kiss. We, yeah, we're, 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 right. We're playing house. So let's. Play house. Yes. You know, and I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So you turned Pac down. Mm-mm-mm. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't like I turned him down. We, it was. <laughs> you loved him as a friend. You loved him as a friend. I didn't want to mess that part yeah. up. Got you. And I felt like. If we did cross that threshold, I felt like we were going to mess that part up. So, you know, it, it, I mean, even when we left and we weren't on tour anymore, because we were 18, we were mm-hmm. all on tour together. And when we w- weren't on tour anymore together and everybody went their separate ways and he started blowing up and he's on the set of Juice and everything. I remember that man called my house because my brother was uh, visiting from England and he was on set because they had met each other mm-hmm. from me and Pop being tight. He mm-hmm. met my brother. My brother lives in England, right? So... My brother comes over. He's on the set of Juice. Pa, he's My brother's on the phone with me. Pop takes the phone from him, and he's like, come to the set. And I'm like, I am at home in Secaucus with my now husband and baby. Oh, can't do that. Like, <laughs> w- like what are you talking about? <laughs> and and he's still on some, I don't care. Like, come to the set. I can see why Will Smith was intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was, he was, he was that dude. If he loved you... Mm-hmm. 
man, woman, a child. If he loved you and had that passion for you, that was it. Gotcha. And Moni Love, let's be clear, when you were um, at that age, everybody was trying to holler at you too, I'm sure. That's why I, that's why I cut my hair off and, and tape my boobies down. Why? Because I wanted to be respected as an MC by my fellow MCs. Right, you didn't want to just be looked at as the... Oh, the cute girl, like, no. Like, I'll eat your food. Give me the mic. <laughs> so you taped your boobies down? Yeah. So they didn't look as big? Yeah. She just didn't want to be as attractive wow. to the guys. Because yeah, and never wore... you. If you pull up any of them old the footage of me, you will not... Exactly. It was, it was a whole point to that. Wow. Wow. You know, and there was another rumor... Um, yeah. Okay, Envy. <laughs> not that was any, I mean, that okay, Envy, spill the tea. No, because there was another rumor that, that I knew it wasn't true, but there was a rumor that... That Moni was uh, a lesbian at one time. I heard okay. that as well. Okay. Um, I heard that and, too. And people were saying, but I never knew Moni to be lesbian, so I just didn't think of anything of it. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> was like, no. She was like, look, a lot of rumors No, going but I did hear that one, though. Oh, you did hear that yeah, one, Yeah, I heard it back in the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, also, Jeezy. Jeezy came on your radio show one time. Yes. And he walked off. Yes. Why did you make Jeezy walk off your radio I show? I did what not. I didn't do anything to that <laughs> man. Jeezy's a good what happened with Jeezy? <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, to sum it all up, you know what I think happened? Mm-hmm. I think that back then I was talking to today's Jeezy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's the best way I can I can sum it up because the things that I see this man doing now mm-hmm. in the community, and I live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I. I closely see and hear about all kinds of um, things that he's doing in the community um, to help folks, to help those in need, to help kids, programs. He's involved in, in, in so much charitable work, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I was I think I was trying to talk to him, not realizing that he wasn't that Jeezy he wasn't yet. There yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you guys talk after that? No, Isn't I've it? never seen him. Never seen I've really? never seen him again Atlanta, since And that. you live in Atlanta. Yeah, I've never seen him again. Wow. Yeah. But there's was, no hard feelings. I don't think so. I mean, not for me. I mean, maybe <laughs> for him because um, there was a mixtape that he put out. And uh, my daughter was at her godfather's in Atlanta. And this was maybe four or five years after this incident happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, my daughter sang on the song. And uh, it was on his, it was called The Greatest. The Greatest, huh? Yeah, that's my daughter singing on that. Oh, really? That's yeah. my oldest, um, Charlena. She's uh, 30. And she sang on that. And um, he removed her what? from it. So I don't know if that, sh- I mean, Jeezy, if you're listening, if it had nothing to do with me, I'd appreciate you telling my daughter because she holds that grudge against me forever. <laughs> it's your fault, mom. It's your fault, mom, <laughs> you know. So, you know, help me out, Jeezy, with my kid, you know. But um, and what do you think about fem- female MMCs now? The reason I ask is because you said you had to tie down your breasts so they wouldn't look big. You didn't write and now it's too much like, about sexual. You were more, yeah, you wanted to be respected yeah. as a lyricist MC. But now you got your Cardi B's, your Megan Thee Stallions, your Nicki Minaj's, after you, your Little Kim's, your Foxy Brown's. So what right. do you feel about female MC's today? Well, honestly, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head with saying uh, nowadays, mm-hmm. because back then we did have a... Uh, 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 Late female artists, my mm-hmm. sisters in rhyme, mm-hmm. that had that book, which I feel like a lot of my younger sisters now take a page out of that book, you know, with being uh, sexually in charge mm-hmm. and uh, prowess, sexually prowess on the mic and on, and on the whole nine yards. For me, um, it was a matter of choice as far as it's so hard for a woman back then mm-hmm. to get any type of play mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm that I felt like I needed to be just as intricate as the guys. Right. So my school of emceeing, <clears throat> you know, singers do scales. I would listen to Big Daddy Kane mm-hmm. and, and, and recite recite the beginning of Set It Off. Mm-hmm. Literal, get bold. I just can't hold back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'd go through that mm-hmm. whole thing. That's, right. that's me doing scales. Mm-hmm. And um, that was my choice back then, even though you had the salt and pepper that was very tongue in cheek, very, you know, sec- sexually aware and in charge. And then from salt and pepper, you get more explicit with uh, Foxy and with mm-hmm. Kim. And oh, yeah, I'd be reciting their rhymes and at parties and loving, you know, their mm-hmm. parts and stuff. Fans, a fan. But for me personally, how I wanted to come across was uh, really formulated a uh, 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 in in the in the walks of the guys, the greats. Be- you were like one me. of the guys. 
This is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you and Queen Latifah had a great relationship back then. I'm sure that helped you too. It did. It definitely did because uh, I, I met Latifah when she came to London. Um, I met a few artists before I even moved to this country. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I met Latifah. She came to London. I met the Jungle Brothers, um, True Mathematics. Sure, Rob G. I met before I even moved to this country. I met Jay-Z before I moved to this country. Mm-hmm. You know, that was... Uh, that was... They had to check in with Moni Love in London before... No, they- <laughs> no. Moni Love was a bubbling, coming up UK MC mm-hmm. that, that that nobody knew. You know, Jazzo and, and, and Jay-Z were in London living it big time back in like 88 they were in this huge i have i'm born and raised in england and i never saw an apartment that looked like that in england or a flat as we call it i've never so seen they lived that there for a little bit they were there for like i don't know like five months something mm-hmm. like that like they were working in a state-of-the-art studio with a top engineer named chuck newt um they were um it was zamba i think it was was it zamba um they were in like stonebridge in this this huge studio it was crazy and um i only we always i only see the picture we always see the picture of the studio with the mercedes out, out front of it i think i see yeah mm-hmm. i only got over there because there was a girl in a rival crew named donna and she was in a, a uk group girl group called she rockers mm-hmm. and my big sisters were the cookie crew and she rockers and cookie crew were they were not <laughs> friendly with each other so for me and donna to be cool was kind of like we got to keep this on the low. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she worked out of the same studio and she was signed to the same label. And she came one day and was like, oh, there's these guys. They're from the States and they're working on a song. They need a female voice. I already did something with them, so I can't do this. Would you come and just it's, I think they just want three words said. I love and it. I love it. That's it. That's what you have to do. You work for the day. I was like, OK. So I went over there. So she introduced me to Jazzo. She introduced me to Jay-Z. And then I sat down in the booth, put the headphones on. Did a couple of takes of saying I love it. I don't even know what this, what it was for. Yeah, I'm like, mm-hmm. did it come out or something? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> but I was well, I was like 17, and I got paid 500 pounds, which was a thousand dollars. Oh wow! Back at the then. time, you were like, I'll take it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so I didn't ask questions, and then after that, you know, we we hung out mm-hmm. some because they were there for such a long time. So that's how I got to go to see where they were being, you know, put up for the time they were there, and I was like. I didn't even know flats like this existed. How do you guys get to stay here? Mm-hmm. You know? And then um, that's when Jay and I got cool. So that's how uh, he knew me before I even moved to this country. So by the time I got here, he, he, tur- up. he turned into like one of the most annoying big brothers ever. Mm-hmm. Rolling up on me wherever. It's like he had hip hop radar mm-hmm. or something. Because I'd be, I remember one night I had an argument with some friends at Sunrise Movie Theater and I, I left and I was walking down Sunrise Highway by myself. Long Island, walking down Sunrise by yourself. He pulls up in a red uh, Acura Legend mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about who did you come here with? Where did you come from? <laughs> like, where did you How just... Did know? Don't it feel like the hip hop circle was so much smaller back then? Like now it's just so much more widespread but it feels like back then it was like the cruise and then if you came to London you know you would definitely see certain people and when you came here there was just certain people that Mm -hmm. you knew and it was like a kind of more of a tighter circle I guess it 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 did but it's for me it still feels like it feels like high school Mm -hmm. it feels like high school and when I came into the high school there were seniors there were juniors (laughs) <laughs> there were sophomores and I was a freshman, you know, and people branched off into their different walks of life or what have you. And I'm still excited when I see every. I'm still excited when I see everybody mm-hmm. like a freaking 16 year old. I'm still that person. Did Jay have Rockefeller at that time? No, not, not even then. No, Jay didn't have anything but Hawaiian Sophie. Wow. Like or if he even had that when I met him, he was fresh working with Jazzo was the dude Mm. when I met Jay Jazzo was the dude he was the one that had the huge record contract it was EMI Mm -hmm. and 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 um he was the one that was in England and they were putting them up in this big place and Jay-Z was was with him because they were working together on a lot of music you know and and so I mean I would imagine that that was an extremely uh flowering point for Jay-Z. Absolutely. Also to be taking all of that in 
Because, again, we were all so young. I was 17. He must have been 17 or 18, something like that. Did you ever turn down any deals? Any deals that you turned down? Like, damn, I should have took this deal. Maybe it was a Rockefeller deal or a label deal somewhere else. Did you ever turn down anything? Like, damn, I should have did that. No. I had a, I had a shark of a manager. <laughs> and um, one of the reasons why I, I, I don't have any sob stories or I got robbed I got mm-hmm. gypped I got gypped out of this deal or I, I don't have any of those type stories to tell mm-hmm. um, I know this because I've been on several panels where they ask you that yeah. right. and I've seen many of my peers share stories and I'd never have one to share my manager was a, 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 a he's he's actually my oldest daughter's godfather his name is Steve Fine and he's from England he still lives in England he's from Liverpool and uh, he was my manager when I was 16 mm-hmm and uh, I couldn't sign my recording contract myself. My parents had to sign it for me. Uh, and he was my manager then all the way through to 25. Wow. That's and crazy. he, I came to the States and everybody was throwing everything at me. Def Jam was throwing stuff at me. Rush, Rush Management was throwing stuff at me. Whining and dining me. They had everybody else. They had Dayla. They had Tribe Called Quest as far as managing them and everything. So get the rest of the native tongues, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I stuck with my little mom and pop store manager. Mm-hmm. You know, I bought him. He came here with me from England. There's all these big powerhouses that wanted to manage me and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I'll, I'll stay with my little little puddly. And, gotcha. You know, and um, it worked out because I don't have any sob stories. I, d- I really don't. That That's mat- good news. That's a That's positive thing. It you, really is. Do you still feel celebrated to this day? Because, you know, whenever I see you, I'm excited. When I first met you, it was on Drink Champs. That's and I, right. That's yeah, the first time we, you had Moni? Well, this is a while ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we were in Miami. Yeah. We were both guest hosting. It was the Revolt Music Conference That's right. years That's ago. That's right. And I was like, oh, shoot, Moni Love is here. It was exciting. Because sometimes you meet people, and they're not as nice as you would have hoped they would be. True. I get Moni's it. too nice. Moni's yeah, always nice. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, met, I was talking to Moni uh, this week, and we had an event out in Florida. So Moni gets on the bus and has to run to the bathroom, right? So she runs to the bathroom. Then when she comes out after she washes her hands, she hugs everybody. Was like, I'm so sorry for not speaking, but I just really had to go to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> we get it, Moni. Moni's always super nice. Always super it's nice. True. Always super nice. Yes. Well, I'm happy that everybody is still celebrating you because I know you are also doing a special. They, well, they are doing a special on Moni Love. You're doing um, Unsung. Yeah, that was. I, I'm a fan of that show. Mm-hmm. So I've been watching it for years. I mean, they're on like season. I don't know. 16 or something like that by now like they're up there in the seasons so when I heard that they wanted to do one on me I was like I don't know because people have spoken about it before other fans oh they should do one on you and I was like no they shouldn't <laughs> yes they should and they was like yeah everybody's like yes they should and I'm like it's going to be too difficult because you have to you have to go to London for that mm-hmm. you can't you can absolutely you, you gotta cannot, go start it. absolutely yeah you cannot skip going to London and I've never seen the show leave the country yet so I was like, why would I be special enough for them to decide, yes, we're going to leave the country on this one? But I don't know. They uh, contacted me and was like, we're doing this. And they went back. They went to England and they pulled up my whole old crew. Like I used to, I was a B-girl. Mm-hmm. I wasn't rhyming. I was Dancing. battling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we do, that's what we do. We B-girls and mm-hmm. B-boys, you know, and um, they found my whole crew. Wow. They found, like, it was wow, crazy. Wow, wow. And then they um, interviewed my dad and interviewed my brother and my nephew. My nephews still live there. My brother still lives there. My dad. It was awesome. They flew my mother in. Wow. Because she lives in Toronto. I always say that like that because she, I usually say Toronto and she says I'm not so say it like yeah, that. Yeah, you're not Toronto. supposed to pronounce yeah, yeah. both yeah. T's I found out. Yeah, she <laughs> says I have to say Toronto. So there you go, mom. When does it come out? Um, I think they're scheduling to air that in March. Okay. Yeah, of of uh, of twenty two. So that'll be pretty interesting. Now, question: Since the verses, have you seen uh, more of the older artists getting booked more? Because I've been seeing that a lot more. I feel like ever since verses, I'm seeing a lot of more of the artists from the eighties and nineties getting booked a whole lot more. I think it's fair to say that the uh, the booking I, I I believe has increased. I will say this though: um, I've been heavily on the road. With a lot of the art, say, like I'm on a lot of dates with uh, Kane. Mm-hmm. I've never been on a I've never been on a, a booking date with Karis. One the first time that ever happened was right before the pandemic. Really? Like I mean, 
JFK, I mean, not not JFK, I mean, Martin Luther King uh, uh, weekend. weekend right before the pandemic hit it was the first time I was ever in my life on the same billing as KRS-One. Wow. That was huge for me. That's huge. Um, but aside from that, uh, I end up on the, on the billing with like Kane and Rakim mm-hmm. and a lot. We cross each other's paths a lot. Um, I would say that because of Kane and Chris's verses, there's that there's a particular show that we're all on and it's coming up. Mm-hmm. MLK again mm-hmm. in Atlantic City. Um, a whole bunch of people have picked up that date in other states now. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Like a whole bunch. Like I thought I was doing one show. Now I find out, okay, we got six dates with oh, that same dope. show. But I don't know if I'm comfortable doing sh- being on a show with KRS-One, man. Like, we need to investigate <laughs> what what happens in the sound, like at the sound desk with the sound dude. We need to really invest. Like, um, all jokes aside, we need to investigate that. Why you say that? Because everybody goes for sound check, right? We all go for sound check. Like, I don't know necessarily how the younger art, how important it is to the younger artists, mm-hmm. but for me and from the school of hip hop that I come from, you don't miss sound check. Mm-hmm. Right? We go to sound check, right? Sound sounds great. Sounds crispy. Sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay? And everybody else, it sounds nice and crispy and clean and everything. Okay? Everybody does their shows. Sounds great. KRS comes on. It sounds like Godzilla walked in the room. (laughs) The whole room is shaking. And it's like, I'm like, how his sound sound different to ours? (laughs) Like, why his sound sound like that? His projection. Yeah. So I was like, Mm -hmm. I need to find out what's going on with him. Does he bring his own sound person? Because I know some groups do. Right. Right. Not a bad idea. Keep it consistent. Like, because y'all remember um, Rebecca with the the long locks. She she worked for a lot of top (laughs) top (laughs) people doing their sound and their stage production and stuff like that. Rebecca's still in the business, as a matter of fact. I know some people used to travel with her on tour. You know what I'm saying? So based on that, I was like, I wonder if he's bringing in his own person. <laughs> he, might, he might be. It's a battle. Wow. Yeah. Well, Moni, we appreciate you for joining us. Always. Such a pleasure. It's Moni Love, ladies yep. and gentlemen. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 